Hello, people, and we have some explosive news for you. That's right, Bitcoin Lightning, the one everyone touts for payments, might have had a security breach. Well, it's not really a breach that someone took advantage of, but it is a security risk, and it's big enough for one of the developers to leave Lightning. If you actually look here on Whalewire, one of the top Bitcoin developers recently discovered a massive security risk in the Lightning Network, which triggered him to announce his departure from the project. He claims there's intentional backdoors. Intentional, folks! Intentional! Not just accidental. That means someone is scamming! Uh, intentional backdoors in the code that allow attackers to easily get full control of the network. Very, very bad. I can't be sure 100% that it's true, but if any of it is true, it is incredibly bad. Let's not forget the main backers of Lightning are Tether, Bitfinex, and Blockstream. I think Blockstream is more trustworthy than Tether and Bitfinex, but those first two, very, very questionable, folks, all ran by fraudsters, so who is surprised? I don't agree with his, with his Blockstream assessment, but Tether and Bitfinex, definitely. I think Adam Back was actually one of the creators of Bitcoin itself, so I wouldn't consider him a fraudster. And of, oh, and of course, the maximalist and corrupt mainstream crypto news channels will be dead silent about this. But we are not. Now, once again, I cannot verify if this is true or not. But if true, this could be massive. So, hi. After writing the mail reply on the economics of sequential malicious replacement of honest HTLC timeout, I did write one more test to verify the behavior of the core meme pool. And this is uh, one of the Bitcoin dev emails, uh, and he references GitHub links. Responsible disclosure process has followed the lines of hardware issues affecting operating system as documented for the Linux kernel while adapted to the Bitcoin ecosystem. Effective now, I am halting my involvement with the development of the Lightning Network. He is gone. He is so upset that he, he had the balls and nads to actually retire, folks. This is how bad he thinks it is and its implementations, including coordinate, coordinating the handling of security issues at the protocol level. I informed some senior Lightning devs uh, in that sense before. Close the very old issue which was affected uh, to me at this purpose on the bulk repositories. I think this new class of replacement cycling attacks puts Lightning in a very perilous position where only a sustainable fix can happen at the base layer, e.g. adding memory intensive a history of all seen transactions or some consensus upgrade. Deployed uh, mitigations are worth something in face of simple attacks, though I don't think they're stopping uh, advanced attackers. As said in the first full disclosure mail, these types of changes are the ones necessitating the utmost um, transparency and buy-in of the community as a whole, and we're altering the full nodes processing requirements or the security architecture of the decentralized Bitcoin ecosystem in its in, uh, in its interoperability. I think no integrity. Never mind. On the other hand, fully explaining why such changes would be warranted for the sake of Lightning and for designing them well, we might need to um, lay put in a complete state practical and critical attacks on a negative 5, 355 public BTC system. Hard dilemma. There might be a lesson in terms of Bitcoin protocol de deployment. We might have to get them right as uh, at first try. Little second chance to fix them in flight. So basically, if someone takes advantage of this, they're screwed. I'll be silent on those issues on the public mailing list until a week of October 30th. So basically, next week, they got to fix this stuff. Enough material has been published and other experts are available. Then I'll be back focusing more on Bitcoin Core. So he might be looking at Bitcoin Core, but he's warning everyone about Lightning that there might be a really, really big security risk and protocol risk. So that's where we have right now. Obviously, not very good news for Bitcoin and Lightning developers because this was the one that everyone was supposed to use to scale Bitcoin. Without Lightning, Bitcoin is really not that usable for a mass amount of people. Yes, you can store stuff on the Bitcoin network um, for store value, but the thing is like, you can't really use it once the network gets busy because Bitcoin max it, maxes out at like 7 or 14 TPS. And obviously, that is not enough to run even a small portion 
of the world's transactions. But now, if you run them on Lightning, you might risk all your funds. And it looks like there is an exploitable hole, especially for advanced hackers. And this guy may even think that an affix will not actually solve the problem. He's still going to be developing Bitcoin, but he is leaving the Lightning project because I think he said this was brought up before, but people did choose to ignore it. Maybe because a fix is not that easy for this specific problem. And that's a huge problem for people that are transacting millions of dollars on Lightning Network, which is essentially a Bitcoin layer too. And they're talking about developing like dApps on Lightning. If this doesn't get fixed, and if this is real, which it looks like it is, it could have a devastating effect on Bitcoin and the crypto community if there's a lot of stuff built on it and there's a core problem with the entire Lightning Network. Now, I wouldn't take this 100% to the bank, um, you know, this could be the boy that cried wolf, but you know, in, in crypto, a lot of times where there's smoke, there's fire and a developer that's this concerned about the development of Bitcoin lightning and a possible exploit on Bitcoin lightning. This is not that easy to write off. And the thing is, he actually believed in, in it enough for him to actually quit the Lightning Protocol. He has alerted senior developers, and hopefully they will take care of this soon. Because I think like as we go into the next bull run, a lot of stuff is going to be run through Lightning. A lot of stuff is going to depend on Lightning. Because you know that Bitcoin Core in itself will jam up with transactions at this point. And there's really no way around it. And uh, if you don't really get on board with Lightning and fix all of Lightning's problems, then Bitcoin really can't be used to transact crypto during a bull run because it'll be way, way too busy and it'll take weeks and weeks for your transactions to actually come through. So this is a serious problem that has come with Bitcoin Lightning and it is one that we have to fix. In other news, um, true USD. Uh, should could actually be in trouble and this is the justin sun usd so they actually received a warning email warning about a security breach that may have compromised their personal identifiable information so they have they might have actually been doxxed without knowing justin sun has a lot of issues right now and he does not need one more to add to his issue list so he was hit by a third-party security breach that led to exposure of personally identifiable information of some of its clients. Not very good. And of course, what has been compromised is the first and last names of the customers, their email addresses, and phone numbers. Phone numbers are very, very disturbing. I mean, this is, I mean, there's no banking information, obviously, thank God. But this is some personal information that scammers could actually use to either like fake your identity or scam call you. So this is a relevant issue. Of course, like the breach involved TrueUSD's former banking and customer onboarding partner, TrueCoin. And um, there was an email that actually signified this. So basically, uh, this actually has been happening. This actually happened like a month ago. And TrueCoin actually informed TrueUSD. And uh, they're only informing you now. So I don't like this because they've known this, they've known about this for a month and they're only telling us now. Now, I don't really use TrueUSD, so obviously it doesn't affect me. But there are a lot of people that do use TrueUSD. And the problem with, uh, like, the, the problem with this is that, like, they should have told you much, much sooner rather than wait a month because your information could have actually been used within that month without your notice and that could either get you in trouble or cause you identity theft problems. So basically like right after the uh, notification, TrueCoin cybersecurity and engineering teams initiated an investigation to determine the extent of the breach um, and then they took swift action but they did not inform users and that could actually result in some damages in which they might actually get sued if it does result in certain damages. Um, TrueUSD added that the, in light of this incident, it recommends that customers carefully monitor their personal accounts for any suspicious activity. Obviously, you'll want to watch that. If your information has been stolen, obviously, you want to take action. And if it's being used, you want to alert the authorities. They want to clarify that the online hacking was directed towards a third-party vendor that was engaged by TrueCoin the former operator of TUSD, 
In its previous capacity as operator, TrueUSD was in possession of certain historical data of TUSD users. They are no longer using this vendor, but some of the critical information could have actually been leaked, and that's never good for customers if their, cust if their information has been leaked. Bitcoin looks like it's attacking $30,000 again. And I think like after two or three attacks, it's going to go through. There's obviously also news that uh, BlackRock and others are working on the final steps for ETF approval with the SEC. And this time, I do not think Gary Ginzer will have the ability to completely block them. So we could actually see one as soon as next week. I really wouldn't bet on it because there's a lot of unsubstantiated rumors uh, being floated out there, but it is always a possibility. So you don't really want to sell out now and then try, try to buy back in once the ETF is approved because it really could happen at any time along the path right now. It looks like like everyone has amended their ETF filings and the SEC is actually working with entities to make sure these filings fit the bill. I think this is the last step before approval and approval could come within weeks or just maybe a month or two. So keep a close eye out in the crypto news verse. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.